I am thankful to Dr. Mustafa Misbah for providing these PowerPoint slides for preparing these video lectures. Dr. Mustafa Misbah is a is an associate professor at Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Sultan Qaboos University, Oman. I have modified the original slides slightly in contents and in the presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So now the second special case we will study. In this special case, originally one complete row can become zero. And whenever a complete row in the root Harvard's table becomes zero, fundamentally it happens when ds has an even polynomial as a factor. This thing you should remember that whenever ds has an even polynomial as a factor of the polynomial then characteristic polynomial then one complete row will become zero so consider this example and in this example the solution normally this is the characteristics polynomial the denominator polynomial is the characteristic polynomial to what we normally say d of s so in the characteristic polynomial because it is starting from s5 so we write here s5 and s5 s4 s3 s2 s1 and because here the coefficient so s0 so first we write the coefficient of s5 then we will skip the s4 coefficient and then we write the s s cube coefficient and then the coefficient of s and in the second row similarly we start the first coefficient of s to the power of 4 the second one here if we note one thing is common that we can divide this complete row by 7 like here we can divide it by 7 this by 7 and this by 7 so we will get 8 6 and 1 so these two rows are same now so here both of the rows are here both of the rows are same like this row and this row so definitely s cube row will become zero so this is the problem how to tackle this problem we will be going to discuss it so we proceed here to handle the problem so this is the table and i cop copied it from the previous table that these two rows are same so definitely here when we do the calculation here 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 we will get the zero so to handle this problem we form an auxiliary equation and the auxiliary equation uh, is formed by these coefficients so it will be s to the power 4 plus 6 s square plus 8 so this equation we form then we find the derivative of this polynomial we will find the derivative of this polynomial and uh, which is given below so the the new equation coefficient become this so this is the way we can compute the uh, elements of the 
row number 3 so we will replace here those zeros this zero this zero and zero over here by 4 12 and 0 so here if we see 4 is 4 is common so what we can do we can divide this by 4 and we will get here 1 and here we will get 3 so the coefficient will become 1 and 3 and then we can proceed to uh, compute the elements in the s square row then in s row and then s to the power 0 row Here normally this 4 we use in the uh, division so uh, this originally we cut it and then we proceed for the s square row from the previous one as usually we can calculate it you can try to get the same numbers after that we got this number if you want you can multiply this row by 3 to get the integer but if you don't do here even then it is okay fundamentally you can write here 1 and it will become 0 if we multiply this complete row by 3 and the next element here you will get the 8 so here in this complete column we say there is no sign change so in this column there is no sign change this means there is no zero of the ds polynomial in the right half s plane this means there is no pole in the right half s plane of the system this means the system is not unstable but it is possible the system can be marginally stable and from where we know that this system can have a polynomial s to the power 4 6 x square plus 8 whenever in third row we were getting zeros so Till now, the analysis suggests that the system is not unstable, but it is possible the system may be marginally stable. In the start of the lecture, we said that PS is fundamentally a factor of the polynomial D of S. So on the next slide, we discuss this topic a little bit in more detail. So on this slide, we discuss the consequence of the entire row of zeros in the Ruth Hurwitz table. The auxiliary equation PS, as we discussed on the previous slide, that is a factor of D of S. Therefore, it is possible to write down the write down the uh, equation DS in this format. This means that D of S is has two factor. PS and DS bar. So our polynomial uh, in the previous section we studied that it is DS like this. Now this DS we can write in this format. So in this case we will get S to the power 4 plus 6 S square plus 8 into S plus A. So this is fundamentally ds bar so here we can say that this one is the ds bar how to calculate this ds bar so i will ask you people stop the video over here and try to calculate this equation yourself i calculate this 
by this procedure s to the power 4 plus 6 s square plus 8 into s plus s to the power 4 plus 6 s square plus 8 into a and this will be equal to s to the power 5 plus 6 s cube plus 8 s plus a s to the power 4 plus 6 a s square plus 8 a and then I can rearrange the coefficients this will be equal to s to the power 5 plus 6 a s to the power 4 plus 6 s cube plus 6 s plus 6 a s square plus 8 s and plus 8a. Now how we can determine the value of parameter a. So here it is easy if we compare the coefficients of this polynomial with this polynomial. So you will see that s to the power 4 over here and here is 7 s to the power 4. This means we can select a is equal to s to the power uh, a is equal to 7. So if we select s is equal to a is equal to 7 this means d bar s is equal to s plus 7 and P of s we have already computed is equal to s to the power 4 plus 6 s square plus 8. Here from this equation we say that one of the pole is at s is equal to minus 7 and there was no sign change in the root survey table therefore the poles or zeros of this polynomial will be on the imaginary axis or in the left half S plane. So uh, we can find them very quickly because it can be treated as the second order polynomial like we can write very easily that P of S is equal to S square plus 2 into S square plus Four, so therefore s is equal to plus or minus j square root of 2 and s is equal to plus or minus j 2. So this means there are four poles on the imaginary axis and one pole on the left half s plane. So here This is the situation. The auxiliary polynomial is purely one thing we should note that the auxiliary polynomial is either purely odd or purely even. But Like in this equation, if we are looking, this is a purely odd equation because there is no, uh, this is purely even polynomial because there is no odd uh, coefficient like 
s cube has coefficient 0 similarly for s the coefficient is 0 so this means this is purely even equation in purely odd equation it is always possible to write down the equation polynomial in this format like suppose we multiply any even polynomial by s so the polynomial will become uh, odd polynomial so over here the p bar s is the purely odd polynomial the example is something like this in this polynomial we see that only the odd powers of s are appearing like s to the power 5 s cube and s if we take s common from them so here the polynomial will be an even polynomial so from this we say that whenever a complete row in the root Harvard table become zero then it has a factor uh, which is an even polynomial so this point is important to note that the poles of even polynomial are symmetric about the origin what is the meaning of this there are three cases if the poles are real then in the even polynomial case the poles will appear like this one like one is here positive pole and the other is negative so whenever in the polynomial there is no sign change so we can expect that the poles are only on the imaginary axis and there is no real pole in the right half s plane similarly b is the case and in b case what happens the poles will be on the imaginary axis and symmetric so this one is also a possible case so whenever there is no change of sign on the first column and one of the row was becoming zero this means some of the poles are on the imaginary axis and therefore in the previous example without calculating the poles it is possible to say that some of the poles are on the imaginary axis and because even polynomial has symmetric uh, poles so it is a fourth order polynomial this means four of the uh, poles of the system are on the imaginary axis and the third case the poles can be complex and like suppose uh, one of the pole is appearing here then the other will be if one is here then the other complex is here and they have a symmetry on the right hand side so if there are two sign changes in the uh, in this uh, two sign changes in the first column of the Ruth Hurwitz table and uh, one of the row was becoming zero before calculating the derivative of the polynomial in that case we can say that there are two complex poles in the right half s plane so this information is quite detailed information which we can conceive without finding the uh, roots of the polynomial another thing you should note that that whenever the polynomials uh, uh, the, the root Harvard table has a zero 
um, row then it become easy to split the polynomial into even polynomial and an other part and finding the uh, roots are the zeros process become simple computationally so one more point you should know that if there is no row of zeros this means no poles on the j omega axis so if there are some poles on the j omega axis there must be one of the row of the root Hurwitz table is becoming zero. Everything from row containing the even polynomial till the end of the root table is a stability test of even polynomial P of S. So let us analyze the stability of this transfer function. So we write the coefficients in the usual way as we were doing previously. Then we calculate the root Harvard's uh, entries by using the standard procedure. So when you do the calculation, you will get something like this. Uh, this we can simplify easily by dividing the whole row by 10. So if we divide this by 10, this again by 10, this again by 10, by 10 and divided by 10. Then we will get this. Again calculating this and dividing the S5 row by 20. So we got this one. So here we are seeing that row S5 row and S4 row both are same. This is why when we will calculate here the elements, all of them will become zero. So the complete row will be zero. So on this slide, to replace these zeros by the numbers, other real numbers, what we have to do? Can you answer? Yes, you can do it. This means we have to write the auxiliary polynomial. What is auxiliary polynomial? It is P of S is equal to S to the power 4 plus 3 S square plus 2. What we should do then? Before my answer, try to calculate it. You can stop the video and do the calculations. You will get DPS upon ds is equal to 4s cube plus 6s and now it is possible for us to replace these zeros by 4 and 6 so here we will get instead of 0 we will get 4 and here we will get 6 but 2 is common between them. Therefore, we can write here 2 and here we can write 3. And then we can proceed for the calculation of the next row. So 
with this we obtain the table like this and the simplification give us this one and then we calculate the next row like this and here again it is good to handle this 3 by 2 just multiplying this row by 3 and if you multiply this row by 3 you will get 3 and 4 this calculation we just perform to avoid the complexity of the rational number and then the calculation give us 1 over 3 and 4 the table is now completed so in this table if we see there are twice the sign is changing so if the sign is changing twice this means there are at least two poles on the right half s plane and then s4 5 and s4 together whenever we calculated s cube this row was s cube row was originally 0 this means that after s4 we had the even polynomial so there are four poles which are symmetric poles so the summary conclusion is something like this that two poles in the right half complex plane why because there are two sign change plus minus and then minus two plus so there are two poles in the right half s plane p of s is this equation on the right half complex plane no sign change from s4 to s0 this means that there is no pole of this polynomial in the right half s plane because of the symmetry this means all of the poles of s to the power 4 plus 3s square plus 2 uh, the zeros of this polynomial will be on the imaginary axis so there are four poles on the imaginary axis so six are we have determined that there are two real poles on the right half s plane and there are four imaginary poles then two poles are in the left half s plane so total poles are eight poles now if we want to compute the ds is equal to ps d bar s we can adopt the procedure we learned previously and you will have d bar s will be equal to a polynomial like this and it become that the higher order polynomial which is eighth order polynomial it is very easy to convert it to the fourth order and finding the zeros of the fourth order polynomial are much simpler than finding the zeros of eighth order polynomial and this can make the algorithm efficient to find the zeros of a polynomial.